what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and i appreciate you being here today i have more details on the forsaken dlc including all details on the new enemies new vendors who is carrying Cade, campaign details as well as the baron and much much more but before we get into that people let me tell you about something i am doing every single month and that is giving away a fully customizable controller to my most loyalist of subscribers Xbox, PlayStation, sent wherever in the world you live. To be in with a chance of winning, hit that like button on this video and leave a comment down below and enter the Gleam link giveaway linked at the top of the video description. Fast, simple and legit people. Good luck, everybody! Okay, so this information comes from the Game Informer's latest issue, so full credit to them. The Game Informer website can be found linked within the video description also. Now obviously people, this video does contain spoilers, so if you want to stay spoiler free, I'd leave now. Okay, so let's start with the scorn, the new enemy to the game, come September 4th. Although they once were fallen, they are much more than just a reskin. In fact, if you didn't know they were actually once fallen, Bungie could have gotten away with labelling them anything, even a new enemy to the game. Which to be honest, they kinda are. So the scorn, once fallen. Suffering from strange experiments, repeatedly reanimated and being buried alive within the heart of an asteroid which has basically mutated them. Bungie state, they are this group that were locked in the deepest parts of the prison of elders. They became something horrible, they bonded and mutated within these dark caverns. They are like an evolution of the fallen. So every subtype of scorn is fundamentally new and they demand new strategies in defeating. Hulking mongrels tower above the battlefield, blasting out cascades of lightning that's near impossible to dodge. Arachnid-like screeb scramble on all fours in packs, bloated with dark ether, exploding themselves, which puts cursed thralls to shame. The radius of the explosion is that damn big. Raiders send out spinning explosive sword blades, avoid energy, also being able to teleport across the battlefield. Lurkers carry small circular gladiatorial shields that stubbornly block everything. You can stagger them though with leg shots. And then there's the Ravengers. These hunchback skulkers charge at first sight, spinning lanterns like sensors that they can slam into the ground creating solar flames. Holding all of the above together, basically the captain of the group is something called the Chieftain. These enemies introduce a new twist on battles by throwing out one of three distinctive totems. Solar totems are spinning turrets of flame that act as a basically a radius shield. Within that radius, it'll only take a few seconds for you to die. The void totem creates an invulnerable shield to all enemies in medium range. When it shows up, other priority targets must take a back seat until you destroy the totem. The arc totems are the most insidious. If one is near you, it rubber bands you, basically sucking you towards it. You must destroy it to escape. It's also said that the Scorn do not retreat. They do not take cover. They are by far the most aggressive AI in the game. And they sound pretty damn cool people, they really do. And that is the Scorn. Okay, so on to Cade, the Baron, and that mofo Aldrin. So Cade's inevitable death is something which basically triggers the campaign. It's the start to the very first missions into the Forsaken campaign and it sets the bar going forward in a way we have not yet experienced as a Destiny player. So the Prison Riot mission opens the campaign. This mission sees you and Cade descend into the heart of the Prison of Elders. At your side is Pet's Revenge. After you are separated, Cade reaches the lowest point of the facility first and encounters the real cause of the uproar. Presumed dead by many. We see a face that has been absent in the story since the Taken King, the face of Prince Aldrin. He was imprisoned deep within the prison of Elders and now stands at the head of an army of creatures known as the Scorn, which we covered earlier. Faced in a battle against a combined might of angry prisoners, shown via an action packed cinematic, it shows Cade in fine form as he puts up an heroic last stand. But out of nowhere, a sniper destroys his ghost. And from that moment, people, we have seen what happens. Game Informer state, Bungie goes to great lengths making sure you hate Aldrin with a passion from this point onwards. Bungie state, we talked a lot early on about a thin line between light and dark. All characters are going to walk that line, even Aldrin himself. The fact he is trying to find his sister, but he's doing it in the wrong way. The player, meaning us, 
We are in that same scenario. We are trying to avenge Cade's death going into this campaign. So Cade is killed and Aldrin escapes. And you are left to take the Exo home. To take Cade home. And there you have it guys. The person carrying Cade within the trailer outro is us. As most already knew. So the Vanguard are left to defend the city. We set out on seeking revenge for our lost comrade. So we set off to a place called the Tangled Shore. Now the Tangled Shore is the long awaited destination for us players to explore the mysteries of the reef. The asteroids here are pot marked with caves, ramshackle pirate bases and hidden shortcuts. In the distance a majestic watchtower looms over the area. Descending deeper into the Tangled Shore you meet the spider. This fallen mob boss once held sway over the Tangled Shore but the arrival of Aldrin sent him into hiding. Spider is the vendor of this destination. Now this is interesting guys. Not only is Spider the vendor here, but our uneasy alliance with him and his fallen forces gives us the only help we can expect this far away from the vanguard. So we do team up with the fallen to an extent. Pretty damn epic if you ask me. Early on while we are here, he wants us to deal with these new invaders, but after we complete the campaign, he still has things for us to do, like hunt down outlaws from the prison of elders, which can be located from anywhere, from random world spots, to strikes, to the midst of a gambit match. But before all that can happen people, the campaign awaits. The campaign for the most part, you have to deal with the barons, as these had a hand in Cade's death. There are 8 barons in total which we'd have to take care of, I believe you can tackle them in any order, well the first 6 anyway. Each baron battle has its own theme, which I won't get into now as I do want to leave something for you to experience. Now Game Informer state, and I quote, While the events surrounding my ultimate confrontation with Aldrin would spoil too much, it's enough to know that the closing act of the main campaign teases a greater threat, forcing our guardians to turn from thoughts of revenge to something much more important. A strange voice calls to Aldrin from beyond the Awoken Watchtower, within which lies the greatest secrets of the Awoken people. That's when we visit the Dreaming City for the first time, after the initial campaign completion. The Dreaming City is about the size of Nessus, and is said to be the most picturesque work the developers have ever done. The Dreaming City is Alvin Homeland under threat from an insidious dragon that has infected its heart. And I have heard people say Ahamkaru here, but I ain't gonna jump to any conclusions as I just don't know that much about the lore of destiny. So as beautiful as this place is and sounds, it's been infected by Taken. Moments after you arrive here for the first time, you are pulled into an ascendant realm and nearly overcome by Taken Falls. The destination exists across these dual planes and it's said to take weeks to fully unravel its mystery. The Dreaming City will literally change from week to week along a three week cycle. The vendor of this destination is Pet's Revenge. She also changes location upon the Dreaming City's changes each week. Game Informer state they spent many hours here but their power level just wasn't up to that to compete with the enemies here so that much of mystery uncovered wasn't really possible but there was plenty they could witness like a new tower defense style public event called Rift Generator which sees your guardian powering up awoken attack pillars in order to hold off an invasion of scorn forces marching out of the mists. There's also a vast arena where three to six people can confront a new take on wave based fights. The Dreaming City is full of mysteries, puzzles, secrets and much more. It's also home to some deep exotic chases. But to find out what that greater threat is, to find out what these secrets and exotics and mysteries are, we will have to wait until September 4th. Which I cannot wait for, people I really can't. So the campaign starts with us losing Cade. It continues with our hunt for Aldrin and killing the eight barons and battling his scorn. It then progresses to a greater threat. On our way we learn that when times are truly hard we can befriend the fallen. We meet two new NCPs in Pet's Revenge, new to Destiny 2 and Spider. Two new vendors to the game, Spider for Strangled Shore and Petra for the Dreaming City. And on that note guys, we have come to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really does help me out. Stay tuned for more Forsaken news. If you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully people, I will see you on that next one.